A senior official in Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's office is now being investigated for inappropriate behavior towards women. For a bunch of self-proclaimed feminists, I think they're doing this wrong. Claude Eric Gagné is a deputy director of operations in the Prime Minister's office. He's actually been working in Justin Trudeau's office since the 2015 Liberal election win, but he was placed on leave, according to a French language TVR report, in early November, following a formal complaint to the PMO and allegations of inappropriate behavior directed towards women. The Prime Minister's office said that any allegation brought to the attention of the office is taken extremely seriously, and in this case, an investigation was immediately initiated and the person in question went on leave. It is the middle of December, but it sounds like this became known to the Prime Minister's office at least six weeks ago. For a government that likes to profess its own feminist nature and its commitment to transparency, they sure kept this thing under their hats until they apparently could no longer do that. How does Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's lack of transparency about allegations of sexual harassment in his very own office encourage other women to come forward and be supported? But hearing all this news now, it actually explains a lot of ridiculous recent liberal finger pointing with regard to sexual harassment during the month of November alone, when Christopher Wilson tried to ask Environment Minister Catherine McKenna a question about Site C Dam and the role of hydroelectricity as a clean power source. This is what happened. Can I get a commitment from you that you will not use that hashtag and not use that name in your articles? Well, me personally, yes, but I don't have editorial control media, of others. Please? But if you want to get into it right now, you actually banned one of our correspondents from going to the upcoming conference in Bonn. So how that is you not that? true. In fact, I wrote a letter last year encouraging you to come because I think that you can all learn about climate change, how it's Absolutely. real and, and it's a, having real impacts. I have impacts. a legitimate question about hydroelectricity's role. I just would like a commitment that you will not call me names, that you won't talk about the color of my hair, that you won't make fun of me, that and the reason I'm asking you not to do this is mm -hmm. because I have two daughters, All right. that there are lots of girls that want to get into politics, and it is completely unacceptable that you do this. That well, you can I be a legitimate organization. people calling them deniers with all the connotations of the Holocaust denial, okay? There is a debate on this science. Now, if you would kindly please answer my question about hydroelectricity, this is very important. There are 2,200 jobs on the line up in the northern part of BC as the BCUC Commission just, uh, just completed their report. So I'm very pleased that you've agreed that you will no longer use names that are derogatory to women. Thank you very much. Uh, in terms of your question, yes, we all know we need to move to a cleaner future. We agree that we need to look at all forms uh, of energy that is cleaner, uh, that we understand that we need to be working with communities to find solutions that make sense, that hydro is one of the solutions, but we all need to be working together. Now in press conferences, journalists ask the questions and the politicians answer. So the whole thing was really bizarre to watch. But the mainstream media loved it. They adore this McKenna as a feminist freedom fighter with a healthy helping of victimhood narrative. The entire exchange was weird and contrived and manufactured. Then just last week, Liberal MP Sherry Romanato stood up in the House of Commons and made allegations of sexual harassment against conservative MP James Bazan, look at this. The member from Selkirk Interlake Eastman publicly made inappropriate, humiliating and unwanted comments to me that were sexual in nature. These comments have caused me great stress and have negatively affected my work environment. While Romanato wouldn't say what happened to her, Bazan did. They were both standing for a picture and he made a flippant comment saying, this isn't my idea of a threesome. He said it was intended as a partisan comment about being in a photo with a liberal member of parliament. Big deal. Bazan immediately tried to apologize. Romanato wouldn't allow him to do that. Then she filed a complaint with the chief human resources officer. Bazan cooperated in mediation. Then he apologized in writing in August, and officials determined that the incident did not support a claim of sexual harassment, and no disciplinary action was recommended for Bazan. But that didn't stop Romanato from standing up in the House of Commons 
and going on the record to ruin a good man who's been nothing but apologetic for a clumsy, sideways, halfway remark. Romanato blew it out of proportion, damaging her own credibility. Her making a mountain out of a molehill is selfish, given what we now know about what goes on in the Liberal Party caucus and even in the Prime Minister's office. You know, when everything is sexual harassment, nothing is sexual harassment. And it makes it harder for real allegations of sexual harassment to be taken seriously. Allegations like these ones here. Rookie Liberal MP from Calgary, Darshan Kang, is accused of not only sexual harassment, but then attempting to buy the silence of the victim in the case against him. He's sitting as an independent now. Liberal MPs Massimo Pacetti and Scott Andrews are kicked out of the Liberal Party caucus also because of sexual harassment allegations against them. In March, Liberal MP Nicola D'Iorio asked Conservative MP Diane Watts about her stripper poll during a committee meeting after her phone went off. He's since apologized for his clumsy remark. And Liberal MP Hunter Tutu was engaged in an inappropriate sexual relationship with a young staffer. Then he broke up with her to pursue a relationship with the woman's estranged mother. It turned into a violent mess. He's resigned from the Liberal cabinet because of that disaster. You know who didn't have a lot to say about these instances of alleged sexual harassment and alleged inappropriate behavior? Catherine McKenna and now Sherry Romanato. Isn't that interesting? While the Liberals were complaining about everyone else's alleged sexism during the entire month of November, they may have had a predator in the upper echelons of their own party and they just weren't talking about it. They were too busy fabricating a sexism boogeyman out of the entire right wing and accusing others of that which the Liberals might actually be guilty of. What a bunch of real feminists going out there every day in the media and playing up their victimhood narrative while ignoring the alleged victims of those within their very midst. What I do know is if there were this many instances of reported sexual misconduct complaints coming out of the class of 2015 Conservative Party caucus, as opposed to the Liberals, the media would be losing its collective mind and talking about a rape culture within the Conservative ranks. Some things will always remain true. If it is not a Tory, it is not a story, and all you have to do is claim to be a male feminist to get yourself out of any trouble. For the Rebel.media, I'm Sheila Gunn-Reed. It is the Christmas season, and yet many Christians in northern Iraq don't have anywhere to worship the birth of Christ. Their churches were destroyed by ISIS, but we are doing something to help them. If you can help our humanitarian initiative to save the Christians in northern Iraq, go to savethechristians.com.